intersection, obviously Broom and Broadway, it's a busy one. It's one where a lot of traffic is connecting between the Williamsburg Bridge and the Holland Tunnel. And one where you can often see, luckily not at the moment, but if you're here a little closer to rush hour, you get a lot of gridlock and blocking of the box. So today we've got our marking screw here. They're going to be putting in the markings. You can see we've already got some of the signs up. And if you start to look around the city, you can see those signs going up. And I think we've provided you all with the list of the 50 locations. And look, this is a, this is a time-tested treatment. We used to do this in the city. Some of you are familiar with it. And we're bringing it back with some real enforcement vigor. And uh, now I'd like to hear from uh, Chief Chan on the enforcement piece of it. I'm going to put my mittens back. Thank you, Commissioner. It's always a pleasure to, uh, to be here with the Commissioner. Uh, we've been Vision Zero partners. And again, uh, the success lies in, uh, we sometimes, as we say, the three E's, the education, the engineering, and certainly the enforcement. And uh, again, we appreciate um, the commitment by the, um, Commissioner Trottenberg and all her our staff. The New York City Police Department is seeking the cooperation and the assistance of our New York City drivers to follow the rules and not block the box. When motorists block the box, they cause unnecessary congestion and ultimately cause additional delays for everyone. The New York City Police Department will be targeting this violation with the assistance of our partners, the Department of Transportation providing updated signage and also markings on our intersections and streets. We ask the public for their cooperation to proceed only when they can traverse and clear the intersection. Certainly, this will make it safer for our pedestrians. Over 50 officers, new officers, will be dedicated to conduct target enforcement at these intersections throughout the city and at the identified 50 locations that you have. This certainly will result in additional fines and also possible points on their individual licenses. So we want to seek the cooperation of our motorists and certainly do not block the box. Thank you. Thanks. I also just want to thank, we have a lot of our team here. I want to thank Eric Beaton, Nicole Altmix Wong, uh, Tony Galgan, Lewis, we have a whole crew here, so I want to just uh, thank this enor enormous crew. It's been quite a lot of work here to get the congestion plan up and running, but let me give them a hand. And um, happy to take questions. Then again, remember, we will, we will do the painting of the box afterwards. The final thing, it's... Uh, for a parking violation, it's $115 for blocking the box. Um, in a moving violation, it's, it's possibly two points on your license, and depending, uh, again, uh, when you go to traffic court, it's up to the judge, but the fine could be up to $138. Well, what happened is that um, it could be either a parking summons or a moving violation. Um, if you're issued a parking summons, again, $115, and uh, Quite often, we do have traffic enforcement agents that actually issue parking summonses for that violation. Police officers, uh, more often than not, will issue a moving violation, which again, uh, uh, will be determined by the judge and also possibility of two points on your license. How much are you through stop the, the point that's being made to all our drivers out there, when, as you're proceeding, as for an example, south on uh, Broadway here, you have to be able to make sure that you clear the intersection and there has to be enough space for you to clear the intersection and go to the other side. If you cannot clear the intersection, then you are in violation of that particular um, uh, rule. Chief Chan, how much do you, col how much do you collect from, from block the box violations? I'm, I'm sorry. How, what's, how much money does the city collect from the block the box violations? Total. Um, again, uh, the total. The I don't have a specific number on, and uh, again, the police department is not involved in the financial end of that. But as I said before, a parking violation is $115 for a parking violation. And again, getting into traffic court, possibly two points, and a fine as high as or as $138. But again, that's determined by the judge. But you see, if you're going to add 50 police officers to go and give out these tickets, it's going to add a lot of money to the city treasury. I wonder if you know how much. Um, no, I, I don't have Probably that figure at this you. time. I, I don't have an estimate. Maybe we can try and get you something. But, but I'll say what I always say about these type of announcements. We're not trying to do this to raise revenue. We are trying to do this to encourage drivers. Be courteous. Be safe. If you're looking across that intersection, 
and there really isn't room for you to go through it and the light's about to turn red, stay put, don't block the box. Can you tell us how this stops traffic congestion? So, Mar sorry, Marsh, you're very hard to hear. Can you We're tell always... us how this stops traffic congestion? There are some drivers who say that, block, that it actually increases traffic congestion. Yeah, I'm sorry, Marsha, you're hard to hear. I said, how does this stop congestion? There are some drivers who say that a block the box enforcement actually adds to a pileup down the street and it makes it more congested. I mean, I, I think that sort of goes against the common sense that most of us see walking and driving around the city. As, as a lot of you know, we have a very complex signal system. We have uh, over 13,000 signalized intersections and we time them to try and keep traffic going in multiple directions. If cars stop and block the box, then the cars coming in the other direction get blocked and you start to have a cascading of gridlock. Now, I think what people might be saying is, it's, if the NYPD is pulling people over, that's a problem. And I know they try and do it in such a way uh, to not create more traffic, but I will highlight sort of an interesting addendum to that. Some of you may have seen in the governor's budget amendments, he proposed giving the city the ability to do camera enforcement in Manhattan south of 60th Street for block the box. We certainly support that idea. That would be terrific if it were automated. You would do away with having potentially those cases where the police are pulling people over. So that would be a great way to address that potential problem. So, sorry, Juliet, say that again. I'll let the chief talk. I mean, I think it's a renewed focus on this issue. Again, people have been in the city a long time. You know that this was a big initiative at one point. And I think over time, you know, attention has moved on to other things. But we've come back at it. And, you know, clearly part of what's driving it now is it's no question congestion is growing in the city, particularly in the central business district of Manhattan. I think clearly um, uh, uh, the enforcement and the attention that's being um, placed on this particular matter and the emphasis certainly will help um, identify it and, and certainly let our motorists know that it is important. As, as the commissioner said, if we block every intersection all the way up Broadway, then no one will move at all. And it makes no sense to get into the intersection. And that causes additional problems uh, in, in either direction to their location. So, again, uh, the motorist that thinks that blocking the box is going to help, it does not help because the traffic won't be eventually will affect and work its out way out from that location. In terms of enforcement, just to give you an idea, in 2015, um, the police department issued about 7,800 summonses for block the box, all right? In 2016, we've issued 27,000 summonses for block the box. In 2017, 56,000 summonses for block the box. And again, um, 2018, we're over 10,000 summonses in this area. So we've increased the enforcement for block the box. The mayor identified this as one of the problems along with the Department of Transportation uh, to deal with congestion. And again, um, by blocking the box, it's inconsiderate. You're going to cause more problems. Uh, you may clear that intersection, but then you may not clear the next intersection because you caused a cascading effect in terms of sitting in traffic and the blocked intersections. I, I, I just want to add on that question, too. Remember, the other reason you don't want to block the box, it's very dangerous and uncomfortable for pedestrians. If cars get stuck in the crosswalks and pedestrians have to weave their way through, they can't always see the car behind, next to the car they're moving between. So that's the other reason you want to keep intersections clean. Holly, there are a lot of people who say that the three biggest, the three biggest, let me, let me do Marsh and then come back to Julian. There are a lot of people who say that the three biggest causes of congestion in the city are Uber and the, the, the cars who pick people up, construction and, and also um, bicycle lanes. What are you doing about that and about those problems that really add to congestion? Right. Well, I think there are a bunch of causes of congestion. I'm not, I'm not prepared to put bicycle lanes in the top three, but I mean, I will certainly put, you know, general growth of the city, economic activity, construction, and there's no question, let me just, there's no question that the FHVs, Uber, Lyft, et cetera, are now, incre are, are now having an increasing effect. I mean, you know, from the other parts of the congestion proposal that the mayor put forth, we're looking to do some pretty dramatic enforcement and clearing of travel lanes, both in Midtown Manhattan, and we're doing some experiments out in 
uh, Jackson Heights in Queens and in uh, along Flatbush in Brooklyn. In terms of the Ubers and Lyfts, you know, the governor has made some proposals on that score. That's something that really has to be handled about, at the state level. What about deliveries? What about truck deliveries during the day? Are you going to do anything to try to get them to come at night or in off hours? Where I mean, that is one of our proposals is what we're calling clear lanes, which is exactly that, which is an effort to keep some key quarters moving during rush hours and encourage shippers to come off hours. And we've been working directly with some of the shippers and some of the local businesses. It's going to be a process for them to change the way they do their business. You know, for example, Fresh Direct will say, all my customers want their food at 8.30 in the morning. That's when I have to deliver. And we've sort of said, well, is there any way we can find to work with you? You know, maybe some of the customers who really need it at 8.30, you'll charge them more. If some are willing to take it at 2 in the afternoon, you could give them a discount. So we are definitely working through some of those shipping issues. In, the, in issuance of summonses, this is something that uh, we ask our, whether it be our traffic agents or our police officers to emphasize because this is what we have identified as, a, as problematic and that's what we will give additional attention to. So again, um, uh, the, the officers and, uh, and the people out there doing it for it's not about generating revenue and things of that nature. Um, part of it is the strategy of, a, of Vision Zero is to identify problem um, issues congestion and things of that nature and we address it by issuing summonses and discourage people from blocking the box because if again ultimately we will not issue a summons if they're not blocking the box period yes What happened is that um, we have the capability our traffic enforcement agents but we have 50 specific intersections identified and uh, part of this congestion program is that um, and talking to the mayor uh, he in indicated that we are going to dedicate at least 50 officers specifically to do intersection control now i will say that there are 50 identified locations throughout manhattan and, and throughout the city but venture to say that those officers in their travels if they come across people who are blocking the box that are not at those intersections, they will nevertheless take enforcement action. So it's citywide, and, but specifically, uh, we've identified these 50 locations. Are these 50 new officers? Uh, again, the officers will be out there. In other words, they cannot be at all the intersections specifically during the rush hour. We want them to be out there during all parts of the day. So again, uh, motorists beware. Don't think that it's just during the rush hour. It's during the whole course of the day where we're doing enforcement. Are these 50 new officers? The, these are specifically, yes. What happened is that um, uh, City Hall um, uh, mandated that we were going to get additional personnel. And what happened is that we pull officers from patrol and those officers are going uh, newly hired in the academy because we don't take brand new officers right at Academy, there's a there's a training cycle for them. So what happens is that we are getting new officers and with that uh, we get specifically fifty officers in traffic that will do that. Here's what I don't understand. Do you have officers that now give out block the box summonses and you're gonna have fifty in addition to that or there No, will it's fifty. It's so, fifty. So right. And will it since you have fifty new intersections and fifty new officers, does that mean that every new intersection gets an officer? No, that, that does not mean that every intersection. I think we would love to have the uh, officers and agents at each and every, but it's not realistic. So what happened is that um, new officers will be assigned specifically in the Traffic Bureau to deal with intersection control. And they're out there, they're doing enforcement already as we speak. So again, um, we certainly would like to see more officers and agents, but again, um, we'll, we'll come across are that. Are these NYPD officers or are they traffic agents? These are NYPD officers. And, and I would say, Marcia, you raise a good question. It's part of the reason why in the long run we would like the ability to do more camera enforcement. Because you're not going to be able to have an NYPD officer at every intersection at every hour of the day, but you could have a camera. And increasingly cities like London and other places are using cameras for this type of enforcement. Just one or two more. We want yeah, because we want to get our crews working. Anything else? 
Well, again, the good news is the governor has proposed it, so I, I, I'm not one to prognosticate about what will happen up in Albany, but I think it's an area where there's some city-state agreement, so hopefully that's a, a winning formula. How, how optimistic are you about a congestion pricing plan passing Albany before the budget deadline? In March? I, again, I, that is definitely one where I'm not going to prognosticate. You all probably know as much as I do. Um, you know, the only thing I've said is we're Obviously, the, the, the mayor, I think, has, has showed some openness to the idea and particularly emphasized to the extent that their new revenues being generated by city drivers or anyone who pays in the city. We want to make sure that funding goes to support New York City transit and that the city has some say in how that money is spent. City priorities are reflected. The, the, for the city to install these kind of cameras, we need state authorization. As you, as you probably know, there, any type of camera we use that's revenue generating requires authorization at the state level. Well, I think what his, the budget language called for is basically just the blanket authority to install them below 60th Street and below in Manhattan. And we certainly wouldn't put them at every intersection, but there, I think there would be some key places we would install them if we had that authority. I, I don't know that I want to venture a number quite yet. I'll, let, let, let's see how the debate progresses up in Albany. is that um, our advocates, I understand their role, but what happened is that um, dealing with Vision Zero, we're part of a Vision Zero task force, and our advocates do have access to the Vision Zero task force, which meets uh, once a week. Now, what happened is that um, block the box um, summonses, we've increased the, the number of summonses for blocking um, uh, excuse me, blocking the bike lane summonses, that's increased in the last two, three years. Uh, so it's a dramatic increase. I don't have the numbers in front of me right now, but we certainly can't get it to you from uh, DCPI office. But ultimately, our, um, through our analysis and also working with our partners in Vision Zero, we target violations. I can tell you last year, we increased our right of way summonses. And if you remember the press conference, for safety of our pedestrians, last year, um, we had approximately, in 2016, 148 uh, fatalities involving pedestrians, um, and it shifted to about 103. It was almost a 30% decrease in pedestrian fatalities. That's, that goes back to, if, if we have to go back and record a history, as far back as 1910, that was about 130 fatalities for pedestrians. We went below that. I don't think we would have to go back to 1800s to look at pedestrian. So we are working on all these issues, and we work collectively with um, our task force and the mayor's office. So ultimately, um, uh, I'm going to say the, the, our, our, our advocates are a, a tough group, but again, we are there to work with them, and uh, we're results-oriented, and we see that in, in terms of four consecutive years reduction in fatalities in New York City, uh, as opposed to a 28% reduction for the four years for New York City, and I believe the national average is up 15%. So we are working in the right direction. And again, uh, when we come across uh, instances where uh, officers and uh, are in violation or they are causing some of the congestion, then we identify it and we work on and uh, we try to remedy it immediately. So again, we certainly will work with all our um, uh, advocates and also our partners, our community, because this is about neighborhood policing. Neighborhood policing is about community and we are going to work very closely with our communities to succeed in all these areas. I, wait, wait, wait. I, just, I just want to add one thing to, to what the chief just said, because, look, it's no question the advocates uh, are always trying to keep us honest, but I, I think he's being a little modest. I mean, we have seen traffic fatalities go down 
four years in a row. And by the way, completely bucking the national trend where traffic fatalities have gone up four years in a row. On top of that, as the mayor likes to say, last year was the safest year in New York City since 1951, since the Dodgers were in Brooklyn and a slice of pizza cost 15 cents. So between the crime rate, the murder rate, and the reduction we've seen under Vision Zero, I think obviously always we can do a better job, but I think the NYPD is doing a pretty amazing job. So I will say that uh, any day of the week. All right, I think we're going to do the uh, the painting of the box now. They're going to be on the southwest side, so probably.